Video number three, this one is on irreducible quadratic factors. So I kind of explained what an irreducible quadratic factor was in the previous video. It's basically a quadratic factor that cannot be factored into linear factors. So let's take a look at this problem. And we notice that, first of all, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So we do not need to do long division. That's always your first step. Do I need to do long division? No. So then we factor the denominator. And I can factor the denominator into x times x squared plus 1. All I can do is factor out a common factor of x. So the x squared plus 1 is an irreducible quadratic factor. x squared plus 1, it's a quadratic factor, but it cannot be factored into linear factors. So therefore, we call it an irreducible quadratic factor. Now the rule up here says that when we have a quadratic factor in the denominator, what we put in the numerator is an ax plus b, or some constant times x plus another constant. In other words, what we have in the numerator is a linear factor. So we break the right-hand side up into two fractions. And our first factor is an x. So we have x times x squared plus 1. That's my factor denominator. So this is a linear factor. So I put a over x. And this is my irreducible quadratic factor. We put the bx plus c in the numerator, because I already used a, so I just go alphabetically bx plus c as my numerator. So the numerator is a linear factor. The denominator is a quadratic factor. The degree of the numerator is always one degree less than the denominator, like I said in a couple of videos ago. Because over here, we have a linear factor, first degree in the denominator, and we have a constant factor, a zero degree in the numerator. All right. So now the procedure is the same as what we've been doing. The only thing that's really different about this problem is what we just did, okay? And that is the bx plus c in the numerator. All right, so now we multiply both sides by the least common denominator. Multiply the right-hand side by the LCD, which is the denominator, x cubed plus x by the LCD. And we end up with this. That should not be an issue with you uh, by the time you got to this third set of notes, hopefully. If you've been uh, uh, watching videos and catching up on the first two. And then we are going to multiply everything through on the right-hand side to get this. And now I'm going to do the method of equating coefficients to get this. And then without the, the variables, we end up with this. And then I already know what C and A are. I can just easily solve to find B is negative 3. So that part didn't end up being too difficult. And so now we can get into the calculus. So we had uh, A is 3, so that goes in the numerator there. And then the B goes here and the C goes here. So we end up with 3 over x plus the negative 3x plus 2 over x squared plus 1. All right, it's time to integrate. Let's break all of these into their own integral. Now, here's another little trick, another little trick. This is being broken up into two separate problems. You can actually take the numerator um, and divide it, uh, write each one over its we're doing a par kind of a partial fraction decomposition here. So let's see what I did here. Negative 3x plus 2 over x squared plus 1 is being written as negative 3x over x squared plus 1 plus 2 over x squared plus 1. Okay, so I think you would agree if you had these two fractions and you were adding them together, you would end up with this over here, right? So what we're doing is we're breaking them apart. We have the common denominators, and when you have common denominators, all you do is you combine the numerators. So I'm splitting this into two separate fractions so that I can integrate each one of them. Otherwise, this is not, we can't integrate that. So here's my first term. That's just going to be the log rule. I write that here. This here is going to be another u-substitution. 
Okay, like I did in the last problem or the last video, there was a use substitution. And then this last one is an arctan rule. Okay, because we have one, one dx over x squared plus one. So if you go back in your list of integration formulas, you will find the arctangent rule. And the arctangent rule gives you that this is going to be two arctan of x plus c. So using the log rule, the first term is three times the log of the absolute value of x. We've done that a bunch of times. This one doing u substitution, where u is the denominator. We're letting, I don't think I did the work down here, did I? No, I didn't. <laughs> so you're letting basically u be equal to the denominator, x squared plus 1. du is 2x dx. dx is equal to du over 2, and you're substituting it in. And so uh, you end up with something where you can integrate using the log rule. And then the arctan rule. So look up that arctan rule. And um, that's what we did for that one. Okay, now I'm going actually to the previous problem. I got these a little bit out of order in my notes. And so here's another one. So I look at this problem and I see that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, so I do not need to do long division. I then factor the denominator into x times x squared plus 3, which is an irreducible quadratic factor and a linear factor. I put the linear factor, a over x, and the quadratic factor, I do a bx plus c over x squared plus 3. From there, we just go to town on it. Multiply both sides by the least common denominator, and you end up with this. Multiplying everything through on the right-hand side, and you end up with this. Equating the coefficients, we have x squared equals to ax squared plus bx squared. We have a minus x on the left-hand side is equal to cx on the right-hand side. And I have an 18 is equal to 3a. Rewriting it without the variables, I have 1 equals a plus b, negative 1 equals c, 18 equals 3a. So I know what c is and I know what a, are. a is automatically. I can easily solve to find b is equal to negative 5. All right, so we go back to this right here. And I substitute in my a for a to get this. I substitute in the b and the c in here to get this. All right, then I ask myself, hmm, can I integrate those? Well, I'm pretty much going to have to do the same thing I did in the last one. I'm taking the minus 5x minus 1, and I'm breaking it up into minus 5x over x squared plus 3, minus 1 over x squared plus 3. And then I'm going to integrate each one of those. And so that's what I've got here and here. So, and then the first one, of course, here is the log rule. So we're going to get 6 log of absolute value of x. Again, this one is a u substitution. And so we... Uh, get that to a point where we then use the log rule on that. And the third one, again, is the arctan rule. You're going to see the arctan rule with these problems, so make sure that you know that. I think I wrote the arctan rule down here. Yeah, yep, there's, I knew I wrote it somewhere in here. Just so you have it, this is the arctangent rule. The integral of du over a squared plus u squared is equal to 1 over a arctan of u over a. And so if you look at this, and you look at this, a's are always constants. So a squared, well, my a squared is equal to 3, so a must be the square root of 3. And then u squared is equal to x squared, so u must be equal to x. All right. And so that's what gives me this. 
So think about that. Uh, that should make some sense to you. And I showed the uh, U substitution part as well over here. What color? Oh, brown. Yeah, I haven't used brown before. Here is the U substitution that leads to that in case you need to see that. Okay. I think I have one more here, and this is a quickie. I'm not really sure why I put this one in here. Um, but, 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 yes, irreducible quadratic factors that repeat. Uh, these can get like really, really messy. I don't think that you actually have any in your work homework problems. Um, so this problem just says set up the integral. Um, I, yeah, I didn't even go that far with it. <laughs> um, basically, how this would be set up is um, you've got all of these factors in the denominator. So the first one, x plus 2, is a linear factor. x minus 3 is a repeated linear factor. So we have x minus 3 to the first, x th minus 3 to the second. And then the last one over here, x squared plus 4, is a repeated quadratic factor. So we would have to do the same thing. We have an x squared plus 4 to the first power and an x squared plus 4 to the second power. And so for the linear factors, we put a constant in the numerator. So we use up the a, b, and c. For the quadratic factor, I have to put a dx plus e. And then alphabetically, what comes next is fx plus g. So that's basically setting up the integral. And of course, you're integrating each one of these once you get, you know, you get, get it all simplified. All right. So hopefully you understand the difference between a linear factor and a qu irreducible quadratic factor and make sure you know how to set up repeated linear factors and repeated quadratic factors if you happen to see one. All right, well, that completes the notes on section 3.4 on partial fraction uh, decomposition.